Hey everybody, Matt Brevage again. Now we're gonna actually teach you how to draw Reggie Ryan. You know, kind of give you some basic techniques that if you wanna draw them, that anybody can draw them, either in your own style or more like the style of the book. Either way, I'll give you some ideas on how to draw them to where everyone knows it's him, but you can also draw them your own way. Reggie, this is an illustration that a lot of people won't see. A fun little illustration that was done to kind of show the amazing awesomeness of that art arm of his. And if you read issue five, you're gonna see Reggie explode into nothing but art, splattered all over the place. And Jackson Pollock come to life, if you know what I mean. A big key when drawing Reggie Wright is how to draw his eyes properly. Let's kind of start off with, Reggie has got I'm not going to say large eyes, but he has sad, deep, dark eyes. So let's just kind of start off with some shape. Hey, again, I always start off with shape and I always start off with just a feeling. If I turn to this and I turn to the point, I start to in detail too soon and then my brain goes to a different place. I don't want my brain to go to a different place. It's not time for detail right now. So. One thing about Reggie is his eyelid flops all the way over. You really, like if you had your eye, then you had your brow, you have this fold, and some people have an eyelid that you'll see like this. He doesn't get that, all right? He immediately just gets this fold right over the top. His eye comes out. Now again, not going to give you a tutorial on how to draw any and all eyes right now. That's going to be for later. This is just little tips on drawing Reggie's eye. Okay, we've chosen an art ops to make his eyes green. So I personally like to leave that open. So we can make sure that the colorist, the awesome Laura Allred, can come in and put a nice green on that. Okay. And then the brow, Reggie has got pretty thick brows. Now, if you'd like to get kind of an example of the look we were going for, though we didn't copy the face exactly, but kind of a feel for the look, Check out Joe Strummer of The Clash and you'll kind of get an idea of what we were going for as far as just a look. So pretty thick brows. And for now, we'll just keep him kind of angry. Just for now. And I personally like to put just a little bit of eyelash there. I may just ink these. And now that I actually detailed that out a little bit, I have to give a little bit more spacing. I personally like to have just a one eye spacing in between the eyes. So I'm gonna put that over here more. So I got at least one eye space, there we go. That's what I wanted. If you ever hear me on these videos, it seems like I'm breathing heavy and it almost sounds like a song because yes, that's what I do when I draw, especially if there's no music going on. If there's music going on, I'll listen to the music. If there's not music going on, you'll hear me just going. <laughs> now, now that you know that, it's gonna really bug you. Would he stop breathing the songs? Nope. You're gonna have to watch somebody else draw if you want someone else to not breathe the songs. Oh, I almost went to the edge of that pencil way too soon. It's not time yet. It's not time for details like that yet. Yeah, 
I could go with that. I could actually just start inking that right there. I don't know if I see if I need eyes. All right, does that make sense at all? What I just drew right there? All right, so let's do a little review. I always start with a circle. The eyelid kind of crosses right over his eye. The brow crosses right over that. The underneath that layer of skin right there between the eyebrow pops out the eye. That's kind of like a standard thing. Okay, again, if you kind of want to see what we're talking about, I want you to see how Joe Strummer's eyes look. And that's kind of like the template of what we were looking for and what we were doing. So you'll notice every time in Art Ops, when we draw the eyes, that's a standard thing you'll see. Okay, that deep, sad, you can have a sad and a grumpy look. He's in turmoil. But that's what we're gonna do with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this and I'm gonna ink this more of in a sketch style so I'm gonna use my Copic marker um, now if I was gonna ink more for publication even though I mean I would use Copic markers for publication too um, I have become a big fan of this brush right here Mike Allred actually there's a previous video to where I actually saw Mike Allred inking with this brush and uh, I too have now fallen in love with this brush Okay. It keeps the tip beautifully. You could flay it out and then bring it back to a point. It's a synthetic tip, and uh, but you don't have to keep dipping and preparing the tip for brush strokes. It, uh, it allows for amazing control and uh, saves that dipping time, as Mike puts it. Um, I love it. I am a fan. Uh, Got to tell you. So what we'll probably do is we'll put a link to this brush at the bottom of the video. And a lot of videos that we do, because you'll see a lot of inking videos that we're about to do, you'll see us probably using this brush, maybe a few other tools, and we'll put also how to get those tools down at the bottom of the link. So just, you gotta click on that, order it up, and uh, ask us a ton of questions on how we use it, or just play around, have fun, because you gotta basically get used to utilizing your tools. All right, so let me put this away. Let's have some fun inking this thing. One of many reasons why I like Copic markers is it's got this nice little brush tool. It's got a chiseled uh, tool. They're refillable and they will last you forever, which I am a fan of. Now there's all sorts of techniques in inking. Say a good friend of mine, Shane Glines, is when he inks, even though I don't know, haven't seen him ink with a brush in a long time. He used more of a pulling technique. And I gotta tell you, that pulling technique allows for more of a control to where I watch Mike Howard, he used more of a pushing technique when it comes to inking, and he has developed an amazing brush line and amount of control with a pushing technique. I think the biggest thing is just grab a brush and start inking, or grab a marker and start inking, and just develop your own style. I'm gonna keep these brush lines pretty simple. And yes, I call them brush lines. course while inking I would eventually just erase these pencils these pencil lines but That works for me. Might have some of the black come into the...
Don't expect to be able to ink very well the first time you start inking. Do expect to screw up a whole bunch. And one thing I say is please embrace your screw ups. That's a good thing. All I want you to do is I want everybody just to draw a lot. But to draw a lot, you're going to screw up a lot. So good. The sooner you get those out of the way, without anxiety, the better you're going to be. Heck, I may just start inking with these Copic tools. I think I'm going to play around with these more. I usually just use them for sketching. But uh, this tip adds a pretty cool line. Ah, so there, we ink the eyes a little bit. Just want to talk a little bit about some tools that I use right here. Whenever you use graphite, if you want to get the graphite up and not lift the ink up, my favorite eraser so far, um, I've had a few and then all of a sudden, you know, they stop making them. But right now, the ones that they're making is, I, I'm going to say it wrong, the, oh, just read it for goodness sakes. That's the one I like. So there. We'll have a link at the bottom of this video to kind of show you if you want to get one of these. It's got some for ballpoint ink and some for pencil. I really like the harder eraser ballpoint ink. For some reason, it does not lift the ink up. You'll find some erasers, like those basic erasers you get, that'll lift the ink up. It'll make the ink all dull. And I don't like it. Right here, this just lifts the pencil right up, but leaves the ink on the page. Which is what you want. I took my brush pen and I just, I just did basic lines on this. I'll erase some of the graphite out of this. And maybe I'll just play around with some gray tones. The biggest thing is this eraser doesn't smudge the ink whatever you do do not press hard into the paper this is a really cheap sketch paper so it's not gonna be able to take too much abuse That's a big thing. I notice a lot of erasers, they pull up the really nice ink lines that you did. If you use really crappy markers or non-permanent markers, it pulls those markers up big time. So Copics and that brush pen that I showed you puts a nice permanent line on that. I hear too many horror stories of people using non-permanent inks and then they do a really nice piece and all of a sudden, a few years later, that piece starts turning light brown and before you know it, it is gone to the world. So we lifted a lot of that pencil up and you can kind of just get a little more aggressive with some of the lines that are a little bit deeper. And I can start playing around with some grays if you will.